good morning students uh, yesterday uh, we have studied about the design of uh, uh, grid chamber okay then uh, i will move to the uh, primary sedimentation tank okay the next unit operation is the primary sedimentation tank here also uh, the principle is similar to that of the grid chamber here we are detaining the wastewater for a certain duration uh, like uh, maybe 1.5 to 2.5 hours then during that time the particles having uh, settling well sorry that uh, specific gravity greater than 1 okay was removed okay during that uh, detention time okay uh, whereas in case of grid chamber okay the particles having specific gravity around 2.65 is removed whereas in uh, primary sedimentation tank because already you have removed the uh, larger objects like uh, grid particles then the, the remaining thing is only the suspended impurities that is having the specific gravity slightly greater than 1 uh, during um, by, by detaining the wastewater for certain time these particles may settle at the bottom okay therefore the main objective of the uh, primary sedimentation tank is to remove the suspended solids you, here you can expect uh, almost uh, 50 to 70 percentage of uh, tss removal in addition to that some of the uh, suspended organics okay not the soluble organics suspended organics almost 30 to 40 percentage is removed that is measured in terms of biochemical oxygen demand and then uh, here uh, you, uh, that like the settling is by uh, type 2 settling okay that is called as flocculent uh, settling even though you are not adding any coagulants whereas in case of uh, water treatment uh, the type 2 settling uh, refers that to how to add the uh, coagulants like alum aluminum hydrated aluminum sulfate okay because uh, uh, whatever the uh, impurities present in the water is like uh, colloidal impurities uh, it makes time uh, take time uh, to settle in the sedimentation basin that's why we are artificially increasing the size of the colloidal impurities by adding the chemical that is called as the coagulant that is uh, hydrated aluminum sulfate then automatically uh, it uh, enhances the particle size during the process of sedimentation but uh, in uh, pre, uh, wastewater treatment okay here also you can expect the type 2 settling it is not by adding the coagulant because of the nature of the wastewater itself some flocculent materials or they are sticky in nature uh, may uh, may like you know it may adhere to each other and then increases the size, size of the particle during the process of sedimentation okay therefore uh, you can expect type 2 settling in the primary sedimentation tank type 1 settling that is uh, discrete settling that that is taking place in the grid chamber whereas type 2 settling otherwise it is called as flocculent uh, settling that is taking place in the primary sedimentation tank then uh, or like you know the lighter organic uh, materials like oil grease and uh, some floating matters uh, may be uh, carried to the top and can be skimmed off uh, from the surface okay therefore you have to provide the skimmer and scraper mainly to remove the floating objects then uh, one important point is um, uh, yeah um, the, regarding the classification of the sedimentation tank okay generally we used to have like a, a rectangular type with a horizontal flow or uh, with a circular uh, section okay maybe in both the cases the flow nature is only the horizontal uh, then you have to give importance to the horizontal velocity uh, whereas in case of like um, screening chamber and all we have not bothered about the horizontal velocity but whereas in grid chamber uh, with a rectangular type basins uh, we have considered the uh, horizontal velocity as an important factor whereas in case of aerated grid chamber the horizontal velocity is not a important factor okay here also but uh, in primary sedimentation tank uh, because most of the things are with the horizontal flow in nature then you have to give importance to the horizontal flow uh, velocity Uh, then uh, um, yeah here just i have highlighted about the uh, the classifications okay that uh, horizontal flow what are the advantages what are the uh, disadvantages okay then uh, horizontal flow generally occupies uh, uh, less land area when uh, with uh, we can provide with the multiple units and then 
lower inlet outlet losses okay maybe you can expect okay because of the horizontal flow nature uh, the losses uh, due to the maybe the bend and other things may be less then less power consumption for sludge collection and removal mechanisms because the solids can be easily settled at the bottom of your uh, chamber therefore uh, it may consume with less power okay then uh, disadvantages like uh, possible uh, dead spaces okay because of the horizontal flow for example this is the chamber okay some portions like the corners may not be occupied uh, for the settling of the solids okay that is uh, one thing and then sensitive to flow surges if there is any variations in the uh, like a velocity uh, flow rate okay maybe during the rainy seasons okay it may affect the performance of the system then restricted in width by collection equipment okay because the width of the chamber is restricted by considering the uh, like sludge collecting equipment uh, require multiple viewers that i will explain later uh, this uh, horizontal flow uh, requires multiple viewers what is wear maybe you have studied in fluid mechanics what is wear and to control the flow of the yeah to no, mainly these devices are placed at the outlet okay um, the outlet of the uh, flow okay. maybe for this is a rectangular channel okay this is uh, you have to provide the outlet okay therefore the wear arrangements okay sometimes the shape may be uh, different okay because of the uh, the restricted conditions in wear loading rate that i will explain later and then high upkeep and maintenance cost for a uh, uh, cost of uh, sprockets chain and flex. these are the uh, parts attached with the sludge removal equipment and then it, here you can see the rectangular uh, sedimentation tank horizontal flow okay you can see well, in general uh, maybe you can just note down this may be like this the bottom portions may be the then the this is the top portion you are allowing the water into this okay. this is the wear arrangement at the outlet okay i will show the photograph this is the portion provided for the uh, like you no know, the all the whatever the sludges are deposited uh, it may be just taken to this place and then from where it can be uh, taken off okay with the help of sludge removal uh, apparatus scrapers otherwise we we can use to call uh, that part as like uh, scrapers then yeah you can see here uh, this is the uh, rectangular type uh, horizontal flow chamber that means the horizontal flow in this rectangular type the flow enter into the chamber at one uh, point and then leaves at the opposite end okay and then uh, you have to provide the retention time of uh, 1.5 to 2.5 hours then uh, you have to provide the gentle slope at the bottom in order to uh, like uh, and uh, enhance the like a uh, sludge uh, let uh, like maybe sludge collecting process okay maybe you have to provide the uh, you have to provide the slopes at the bottom yeah you can see this is a rectangular uh, type uh, primary sedimentation tank okay uh, here you can see that okay uh, this is the outlet okay this is the tank from where or this side is also you can expect the uh, sedimentation basin the outlet is it is not exactly it is just come it is not coming out as such there is a like a triangular notches or rectangular notches the provisions for rectangular notches it is it is provided here through that opening that water may come out okay like this you can see this is like this through this the water may come out after the a sufficient retention time okay these are the multiple wears okay in order to maintain the wear loading rate they have not provided as a single wear, uh, like the single stretch as such okay you can see here this is one set this is one set this is one set mainly uh, that uh, to enhance the uh, wear loading rate or in order to maintain the wear loading rate okay they have provided multiple wears 
okay that means in order to increase the, they have increased the wear length okay during the design part okay maybe you can just uh, go through that uh, details yeah, you can see the top view of the rectangular sedimentation tank yeah this is the circular in the circular uh, horizontal flow chamber the flow enter into the tank from the bottom at the middle point then this may overflow like this and then it will flow horizontally and uh, reaches the weir that is the uh, rectangular weir and then it may uh, uh, may be collected through the outlet okay is it clear uh, it's like a maybe i can see some of the you have to make an imagination that okay how it will be yeah this is not yeah is it clear uh, students now you can see that okay there are two different uh, this is the inner portion of your sediment uh, uh, circular sedimentation tank okay then uh, they have provided the weirs at the end of the circular sedimentation tank in addition to that this is attached with one more portion that is mainly to collect the treated uh, effluent okay the, like no you just imagine that you have one more this is a portion the water is entering from the middle and then it is flowing horizontally through or like from the middle and then after sufficient retention time the water may overflow over the weirs and then it may be collected at the outer chamber outer chamber will not be penetrate to the entire depth of the uh, sedimentation basin it is like a small uh, arrangement now you can see this diagram now you can understand okay this is the in, uh, in inner portion the inner portion you are receiving the waste water then this is the outer portion okay because through which like the water may overflow this is the weir arrangement through which water may overflow it may be collected in this channel this is the section view you can see the section view therefore in the plan you can see the circle that representing the uh, horizontal flow or circular clarifier the water enters from the middle and then flows in all directions and then it may after the sufficient retention time it may overflow over the weirs and then it may be collected at the outer chamber is it clear students yeah yeah yes ma'am you have to visit some of the plans then only uh, you can understand about this uh, arrangements okay you can see the triangular notches you can see the rectangular notches it is maybe you have not done any fluid lab also that's why it's very difficult for you to understand the notches and weirs you can watch some of the videos okay then that is a uh, like you no know, the provisions to be provided in the uh, chamber for the movement of the smooth movement of the flow to the outlet okay or maybe to the next unit yeah these are the uh, different uh, classifications okay mainly uh, you just remember about uh, two things one is with the horizontal flow the type may be with a rectangular and then one is the horizontal flow with a circular sedimentation tank now we will move on to the uh, design of uh, primary sedimentation tank maybe you can note down the problem yeah design a circle rectangular sedimentation tank with the average flow rate of 1.4 mld please note down the design criteria the design criteria uh, for primary sedimentation tank with a rectangular type okay. one is with the detention time detention time that is in terms of hours 
varies from 1.5 to 2.5 hours. Then generally they used to consider 2 hours. That is the typical value. Then overflow rate. Overflow rate or we can say as a surface loading rate. OK, this is meter cube per meter square per day. That means how much flow you are applying over the surface area of the sedimentation basin. Generally this value is. Uh, they have given two things. One is for the average flow. Another one is for the peak flow. We have to design the system uh, for the average flow and then we have to check it for the uh, peak flow conditions. OK, this is 30 to 48 hours, sorry, 48. And then for the peak flow, it is 80 to 120. Then the typical value is 100. And then we are loading rate. We are loading rate. This is expressed in terms of meter cube per meter per day. That is the meter length of the year. That is 125 to 500. Then typical value is 250. Then uh, these conditions like uh, detention time, overflow rate, wear loading rate, these values are common for both circular and uh, rectangular uh, sedimentation tank. The only the difference is with the uh, length to width ratio, length to depth ratio in the uh, with respect to the rectangular and circular. OK, for the rectangular tank. The depth is. From 3 to 5 meter. Then with the condition of 3.6 and then the length is. 15 to 90 meter. Then 25 to maybe we can no need to mug up all those things. OK, then some ratios you have to remember with this 3 to 24. Then this is 6 to 10. Then whereas for circular. The depth is. 3 to 5 meter, then this is 4. 4.5. Then diameter 3.6 to 60, 12 to 45. Then bottom slope 60 to 160 mm per meter. Average value thing is 80. Okay. Some. Awesome. Uh, in this problem, they have given the uh, average flow rate that you have to design uh, for the sedimentation tank. Uh, sometimes in addition to the flow rate, uh, they used to give how much amount of uh, suspended solids removal or BOD removal. There is a chart that I can uh, share with you with through the MS teams. OK, there is uh, like no, this is the overflow rate. X axis is the overflow rate. Overflow rate that is expressed as meter cube per meter square per day. Then the y axis is the percentage removal. Already they have conducted the experiments, OK, like uh, they have developed a chart. OK, that means they have developed the relationship between overflow rate and then percentage removal of suspended solids and BOD. That means they have constructed the uh, like a sedimentation basin or maybe the small reactor in the laboratory. They have operated the system on like a basins with a different overflow rate and then for each overflow rate they have monitored what will be the suspended solids and BOD removal. OK, like this. Uh, this is the way they have got the graph. One is for BOD. This is for BOD. Another one is for suspended solids. OK, uh, this side it may be like 70 percentage uh, 60. OK, then up to 10 to like a 70 percentage. Therefore, what you have to do is if they have given the BOD removal or suspended solids removal, then you have to according to the BOD or suspended solids removal, then you have to draw a horizontal line and then you uh, just uh, maybe if they have given the suspended solids removal, you just draw a line corresponding to this and then from this find out what will be the overflow rate to be maintained in the sedimentation tank. 
okay or sometimes they they will give in terms of bod removal around 30 percentage bod removal or uh, 35 percentage one because this is a maximum itself it is uh, a 38 only okay generally you can expect a uh, very less removal of bod so this is in the form of suspended uh, you can expect in the uh, primary sedimentation tank okay if it is 30 percentage bod removal draw a line or is running to 30 percentage and find out the overflow rate okay this is a one way you have to select the overflow rate okay before uh, doing your uh, design okay then uh, they will give the flow rate they will give the uh, like bod or suspended solids removal then the next step is you have to calculate the uh, you have to find out the overflow rate or sometimes what they will do is like they will give the overflow rate okay then you have to uh, design the system they will give the instead of giving bod and uh, suspended solids removal then they will give the overflow rate directly okay therefore for this problem the average flow is 1 uh, 1.4 mld and then the overflow rate is 35 meter cube per meter square per day okay please note down okay design the primary sedimentation tank maybe with a rectangular type and then uh, with the overflow rate of 35 meter cube per meter square per day and then uh, the overflow rate is otherwise it is called as the surface loading rate okay the surface loading rate means how much flow you are applying over the surface area now with the help of this we can easily calculate what will be the surface area the surface area is it is a uh, flow rate average flow divided by the overflow rate it is 40 1.4 into 10 power 3 divided by 35 then it is 40 meter square uh, students uh, here uh, you have to consider only the average flow you should not design the system for the peak flow the reason is that along with the suspended solids you can expect 30 percentage of bod removal okay therefore mainly with the organic solids okay then Uh, you should design the system only for the average flow then second uh, thing you just uh, make an assumption like length to width ratio length to width ratio from 2 to 4 you can see the uh, pre that design criteria the design criteria uh, you can see it is 15 to 90 meter And then width to is three to twenty-four meter. The ratio is approximately two to four. Okay, that means the length is two to four times of B. You, maybe you can adopt three times. Okay, the middle value you can adopt. Therefore, uh, we know the surface area. The surface area is L into length into breadth of the tank that is equal to forty meter square. Then length maybe you can adopt three times of the width into B that is equal to forty. Then the b is equal to 3.65 meter maybe you can adopt 3.7 meter then length is 3 times 3.7 that is equal to 11.1 meter then depth of the settling basin maybe you can uh, uh, adopt depth of settling basin that is equal to Three meter. Then total depth of the tank. Just three to point five, like point uh, five. You can adopt point five as the free board, and then point five for sludge settling. Okay, these designs are very uh, simple. Okay. Uh, only thing is, uh, you, you have to remember about the ratio of length to width. Another one is the overflow rate. If it is given directly, you just calculate the surface area and uh, assume length to width ratio, and then find out the uh, length as well as breadth of the uh, chamber. And then depth generally we used to provide three meter for the uh, settling basin. Okay, then, but depth is not a criteria. Maybe how studied that why depth is not a criteria here. 
in settling basin we are just simply adopting we need we need to provide some depth no otherwise the settling will not take place but depth is not a criteria can you tell me why students yeah please uh, uh, read a type 1 uh, settling uh, in detail maybe you can go through some of the books and then uh, read the type 1 settling okay then total depth of the tank is 4 meter then now we have to do the checking checking for detention time detention time as volume divided by flow rate volume as 11.1 into 3.7 into the depth is uh, you can find out the depth of the flow you, uh, for calculating the detention time you have to consider the depth of the flow that is 3 meter then divided by the flow rate is 1.4 into 10 power 6 into 10 power minus 3 then maybe multiply with 24 uh, to get their values in terms of hours how much students Two thousand hundred and twelve. Huh? Two thousand hundred and twelve. No, no. You just consider. I don't know. It should be in terms of hours. No, why that much uh, duration? Volume is meter cube. Convert the flow rate also in terms of meter cube. Now this is it two hours? Yes, ma'am. Two point one. Yes, two point one one. Two point one uh, hours. Okay. This is greater than uh, less than two point five hours, and then greater than one point five hours. Okay. Therefore, this is okay. Then second uh, checking is for the overflow rate. or flow rate corresponding to the peak flow because we have designed the we have considered the or flow rate corresponding to the average flow but now we have to check it for peak flow condition uh, that is equal to uh, like the peak flow rate is three times of average flow this is the divided by the surface area will give the overflow rate corresponding to the peak flow condition 3 into like 1.4 into 10 power 6 into 10 power minus 3 divided by the surface area is 11.1 into 3.7 what will be the value one not to point yeah. two 6 one not to point two meter cube per meter square per day now you refer the condition uh, the design criteria how to check here the the overflow rate uh, corresponding to uh, peak flow is between 80 to 120 now it is coming between 80 to 120 it is Less than 120 meter cube per meter square per day, then greater than 80 meter cube per meter square per day. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Then and then one one more checking is for wear loading rate. Wear loading rate. This, yeah, you can see here the wear loading rate. This is for the average flow. 
then this 1.4 into 10 power 6 into 10 power minus 3 divided by the wear length. What will be the wear length here? Students. Yeah, this is the maybe in the plan you can see the chamber is maybe like this. What is the length of the chamber? It is 11.2. Then width of the chamber it is. 3 point. What is the width of the chamber? 3.7 meter. OK, now you are admitting the flow at the one end. It is entering into the chamber. This is the plan view. OK, entering into the chamber at the one end, then moves through the. Chamber in the rectangle like the through the length. OK, there is a horizontal flow movement and then it leaves the tank at the opposite end. That means throughout this portion it is overflowing. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. In the uh, uh, section, you can see this is the rectangular type tank. Then this is centering like this. OK, this is the uh, depth of the flow. The depth of the flow is uh, we have. What is the depth of the flow? It is 3 meter. This is the depth of the flow. And then flow is entering into that tank. That means through some chamber it is entering into this. There is a horizontal movement, horizontal flow movement, and then leaves the leave. This is the like no opposite end. OK, throughout this. It is entering. No, it, it, there is a small chamber similar to the circular sedimentation. I have explained. No, here also you can see the uh, like me, one minute. I can show you the diagram. Yeah, here also you can see. OK, there is a overflow and then there is a small chamber after this. OK, through this the water is collected and then taken to the next treatment unit. This is the overflow wear. Overflow wear should be provided throughout the complete width of the uh, chamber. OK, for circular it should be provided around the circumference. OK, the water may overflow to the outer chamber throughout the circumference. But whereas in case of rectangular chamber, the water may overflow into the like the outlet. OK, that is uh, one more unit is provided. OK, in the section I have shown. OK, this is the way they used to provide this bill may be collected like this. And then this this uh, side should be like you no, know, you can see this is a complete entire uh, width of the uh, chamber. If it is the if the wear loading rate is not uh, no satisfied, then you have to cut short like this. You have to cut short the wear length. OK, or may, may you, you have to increase the uh, wear length in order to meet the design criteria. OK, now uh, you just imagine that 3.7 meter is the length of the wear. Then calculate the wear overflow rate, sorry, wear loading rate that is equal to 1.4 into 10 power 3 divided by 3.7. Then it is. 378 meter. 378 meter cube per meter. Per. What is the design value? It should be between 500 to or should be greater than 125 and less than 500 meter cube per meter per day. Okay, is it clear students? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, um, you just go through the design once. Okay, they have given the average flow rate or overflow rate. Calculate the surface area. Then assume length to with ratio as 2 to 4. And then with this, you calculate what is the length, what is the uh, width of the chamber, 
and then assume the depth of the flow is 3 meter. You can have an assumption for free board and slit settling zone that is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 meter. Total depth of the tank is 4 meter. Now you have to do the design checking with respect to the detention time, overflow rate, and wear loading rate. Detention time, volume loaded by the flow rate. And then for calculating the uh, volume of the sedimentation tank, you have to consider only the depth of the flow. And then you check it for the ranges. Uh, the detention time should be between 1.5 to 2.5 hours. Then overflow rate, because we have designed the system for the average flow, uh, we, uh, uh, then you have to consider the overflow rate, that is the overflow rate corresponding to the peak flow. Peak flow is three times average flow divided by the surface area will give the overflow rate. And then that should be between 80 to 120 meter cube per meter square per day. Then we are loading rate. Uh, we are loading rate is the uh, flow rate divided by the length of the wear. The length of the overflow wear is across the width of the chamber. Therefore, the entire length to be considered as a uh, width of the chamber, like a length of the wear. Okay, that is 3.7. Now it is coming as 378 meter cube per meter per day. Okay. Now, can you tell me? Uh, for example, sometimes if the uh, value is exceeding 500, how do you uh, like uh, um, increase, uh, maintain the wear loading rate? Students, how do you change the width of the chamber? Okay, how do you change the width of the chamber? That means if the value is 500 means the width may be less. B is less. That is the meaning, no? Students? Others? Yes. Yeah, then uh, how do you change the or how do you increase the width of the chamber or what, what modifications you have to do? to meet this criteria. And we increase the length, ma'am. How do you increase the length? Anyway, I, uh, you just go through today uh, some materials and then we will discuss tomorrow about this. OK, is it clear? Yes, okay, this is uh, one important aspect that you have to you know, now it is satisfying the criteria some for example some problems if it is not um, meeting okay if the criteria is not satisfied then what you have to do you have to know the concept okay yeah uh, can you just take the uh, one more problem that is with the circular sedimentation tank yes ma'am yeah design your primary clarification system For your design average flow of 7570 meter cube per day. 7570 meter cube per day with peak hourly flow of peak hourly flow of 18,900 meter cube per day. And minimum flow of 4540 meter cube per day. Design multiple unit system. Design multiple unit system for estimated. Estimated 35 percentage BOD removal, 35 percentage BOD removal at design flow. Minimum depth is three meter. Minimum depth is three meter. No, I, I told no that depth is not an important factor here. 
the reason is that the the thing uh, the design is mainly based on surface area so overflow rate okay therefore that's why the depth is not an important factor but we should provide some minimum depth for the process to takes place okay. and then uh, please note down uh, uh, for the 35 percentage bod removal the overflow rate is 28.5 meter cube per meter square per day okay maybe you just go with the uh, rectangular sedimentation tank okay rectangular type tomorrow's class we will see the circular sedimentation tank I will stop with this.